Hello my fellow Protoners and PSO2 players. This is an update to one of my previous videos. I'll start this video off thanking Spud Commando for some interesting information he found, and for the Dark Riders Alliance for partying with me for the footage that will be playing in the background of the video. First up is Spud Commando's info. While it is not a 100% proof, it is enough that it raises hope that NGS will be more easily coming to Linux and the Steam Deck. Now, according to this email that we can see, Inca Internet Co. Limited, makers of GameGuard, have said that they are supporting Proton along with the Steam Deck, but have not made an announcement about it. Now, I won't take it as a full truth until we can get a second source to confirm this information, and preferably the second source should come from Inca Internet Co. Limited themselves as a news announcement, or talking with one of those media outlets that support Linux. And them not announcing it does add some sus about the email, as currently the default thought about any cheat software is that if you don't announce it, you don't support it. So if Inca Internet Co. is limited is listening, announce it. It'll help in marketing your product and have a developer's customers happy at the potential of running their game or a game they like and love on the Steam Deck or on Linux. Furthermore, it means that developers that have use your product and are not supporting Proton and Linux will probably start getting asked by their customers to support Linux and the Steam Deck itself if they want it. Uh, but now let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's still much that would be needed to be done to get New Genesis working on the Steam Deck correctly. Uh, now if I were a smart Sega manager working on New Genesis aiming to gain access to the Steam Deck platform, I would do it in phases and not rush it as rushing it would lead to more problems and bugs than a slower, more planned rollout. If Proton and the Steam Deck are in the plan, I, as a Sega manager, would at least announce that I was looking into phasing in support for the Steam Deck over a year or two and give a little bit of a roadmap on it, just so this way everyone's expectations are a little bit more in check. Uh, now, the first phase would be to have Pro a Proton-supported NH, making sure that we have Proton enabled and announcing it, which, if Spud Commando's evidence is true, the first phase could be done very quickly, uh, probably as early as current year April, May, maybe even June. That soon, if they get to working on having GameGuard have its Proton switch enabled. Now, this would also mean that it would open the doors to Linux users and allow feedback and data on Linux performance, which could help in pinpointing areas that need work. In fact, it might help in pinpointing sources of other bugs in the game and helping in solving other issues while growing the availability of new Genesis with a new platform as just gained access to. Now, given the test run I did, we can expect some performance degradation, but it can be fixed and might point out to other issues within the engine itself. Now, the next three parts could be worked on in parallel for Phase 2 in varying degrees. Uh, now, this first part, I'm sorry to say this, it'll hurt some. In fact, it might hurt a little, but it'll be worth the time and resources. Uh, but it'll be very much needed, and the reward will be worth the labor and time and effort put into it. And it is switching the rendering API from DirectX to Vulkan. Yes, that bloated soy developer API made by a company that makes bloated, slow, insecure software to be replaced by better, slimmer, cross-platform API that is closer to the metal or hardware in layman's terms. Now, with Vulkan being closer to the metal, it does mean the developers can do tricks to get even better performance than the general plus 5% that Vulkan has over DirectX. Furthermore, since the API is natively supported in Linux, uh, Proton would not need to use the DXVK or DirectX to Vulkan translation tool, which eats up a lot of the performance gains one would gain from winning a Windows game in Linux via Proton. From one of the Steam Deck development videos, we can learn that there are going to be a lot of tools that will assist in developing and making sure your game can run on the Steam Deck, along with solving any problems and issues. And this video is actually on a deep dive of the hardware. And with the profiler and other tools, it could actually assist in making the engine actually run a lot better. Now, that's enough on switching the renderer. Uh, this next part should have no problem being running in parallel as an update, 
and this update is concerning the launcher, and it means moving the launcher to more native libraries like Qt or GTK. It'll help in fixing any issues that Proton may have with certain libraries or frameworks. Now, apparently it looks like from what I've seen, uh, launchers do have a bit of an issue for Steam Deck verification, so it has to be something that has to be looked at. Now, if I recall correctly, Monster Hunter Rise also has a launcher, so it could be a sample of what needs to be done for making a good launcher for the Steam Deck. Now, for the third part of Phase 2, it is working on the UI. As the Steam Deck screen, when not docked and in a handheld state, is quite small, so a number of UI elements will need some resizing and other elements temporarily disabled. UI elements I'd recommend disabling are the chat cut-ins and the manga expressions, along with reducing the resolution size of the symbol art and stamps, as they would probably need to be a quarter of their size to somewhat work with the screen size and not be crowding. Also, the chat log would need to be by default in a handheld state, covering about half the screen full height on one side to be readable, and only appearing when trying to chat. And otherwise, when you're not trying to chat and people are sending chats, uh, it would only be the chat bubbles and they'd be aiming more to the top or bottom or along the sides and not in the middle of the screen, obscuring much-needed uh, viewing of the controls. Um, now, this is also, during the second phase, is where the developers can start testing and working on using the special Steam Deck repos, as it'll be a big help in optimization in the third phase. The, now, we get on to the third phase, and this is more cleanup and optimization for the Steam Deck. This phase would see that we're adding the Steam Deck icons or glyphs, along with using the Steam Deck special repo, where the Steam Deck will get a special version of the game, one that would not download and store all the highest res models and textures, as the Steam Deck would likely not be able to run on graphic settings of 5 or 6, and 4 might be the best it could handle, and with these models and textures removed from the game, it should be much lighter in storage. I figure if the game is about currently 100 gigabytes, this slimmed down version without the high res textures and models could be near 60 to 70 gigabytes in size. Heck, if we're really lucky, it might be half in size. Now, clearly getting it, everything onto the Steam Deck and running well will take a few years since Sega would need to divide resources between giving us new content and game updates while also updating the game and replacing and updating sections of the code to run on the Steam Deck. But now if you think of it as a waste of time to do this, we can actually think of it as an investment and buffer. Say a new virus similar to May 2017's outbreak of WannaCry, but worse happens again. Being able to run on a non-Windows or Microsoft product means you have another way to play NGS or PSO2 without worrying that the virus of nuking your computer or Xbox console. As in 2017, there was a Linux version of Waronikai that came out a few months later, and it did orders of magnitude less damage in an even more critical part of the internet, uh, and it was resolved and fixed faster than the Waronikai that came out hitting Windows as the outbreak lasted three days, and that is with someone finding a kill switch. If the kill switch had not been found, I bet that break outbreak and the problems it caused would have not been resolved for at least a week. Now, for those that don't know, Linux did have an outbreak of its own version of WannaCry, and it was resolved in 24 hours without a kill switch. Now, for those Windows fanboys who will say, who cares about Linux, it only accounts for 3% of the desktop space currently, while Windows accounts for 90%, so don't do it. Well, that is true. However, you were forgetting about server space, which is about the same number of computers as desktops. And they're in a more critical place in the internet, as servers are the backbone of the internet. And, well, Linux is the much bigger majority there, not Microsoft. Uh, furthermore, due to the nature of Linux distros, the Linux WannaCry was contained by natural immune distros. Those distros with the immunity shared their code with those that lacked the immunity, effectively making all active Linux distros 
immune to this Linux version of WannaCry in 24 hours, much faster than the Windows outbreak. Which means if Sega supports Proton in the Steam Deck, they are hedging their bets against another outbreak of something like WannaCry, as WannaCry had a number of people keeping their Windows computers off to avoid infection of one of the most infectious pieces of military-grade malware ever written. Now, something else the Microsoft fanboy should know is that Microsoft has actually made two Linux distros. Yes, they have made two Linux distros. First off is Azure OS. It is a Internet of Things operating system, and the other one is known as CBL Mariner, a server operating system. So, if this continues, Microsoft may jump from their bloated Windows operating system and make Linux distros in the future with the Windows subsystem as a compatibility layer to run the old Windows applications. So, if developers are making their games Proton compatible now, it's like hedging their bets on the likely desktop operating system paradigm shift that'll likely be occurring over, say, the next 10 years, where gamers will more likely be running a Linux operating system and then Windows and Microsoft Windows being relegated to offices and businesses with more games being made for Linux, and in part due to the fact that Valve has started making Linux runtime environments to ensure compatibility by uh, making sure that when you run the Linux games, or Linux native versions, or Proton compatible versions, there's always an environment that's compatible that has all the runtime and libraries at the right versions all installed and running in their own container. Now, other digital sales platforms might also start to incorporate these runtime environments and Proton to give their customers better and more consistent experience, while also making sure to remove this locked platform stuff. Well, now that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, or leave a comment below. And I hope to hear from you.